Hi and welcome to Let's Win Invisible Ink Tactical Espionage Game by Cly Entertainment. Um, this is a fantastic game I picked up for like, I don't know, 18 bucks, at least 10% off on Steam, uh, just because of the reviews. It basically said if you enjoyed XCOM, if you enjoyed their previous game, Mark of the Ninja, like, you're gonna love this game, you should play it. It won a bunch of awards, so I picked it up. Um, the art style is fantastic. Boom. The, uh, the mood is perfect, and I've played a couple games. I'm gonna play through the story, forget the tutorial. And my first game is going to be on Expert, my first game for you. I have be a beginner campaign, I'd be an Expert campaign. I played some Expert Plus and got stomped. That was before I beat the Expert campaign, but let's start off with uh, what I think is the uh, the expected like uh, difficulty. Like they say, this is the base difficulty in tuning for the game, Expert. Um, I do suggest you p you play beginner or experienced first. Um, beginner by the end felt all too easy, but uh, I ex expert would have crushed me initially. And um, I think you can of course toy with all the different settings. Um, there's also an endless mode, which is by default expert, and endless plus, which is expert plus. And that does not have a final mission. You just play until eventually you die, uh, which is a very cool, great addition to a game. So since my XCOM series uh, is getting produced quite slowly, uh, I figured I would fill in some of the gaps with this game, which I've been using to uh, to <laughs> to keep me uh, on track as I develop my mod for XCOM. So uh, let's go ahead and kick in. We'll watch the intro video, which is excellent. Get to the main server, collect the data, and get out. No detours. Copy that, Central. Proceeding to target. Two of our intrepid agents. Oh. Insertion was clean. Alarm level holding steady. We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. Corporate goons incoming. It's silent on all frequencies. They should have detected That's us That's Incognita, the AI. Receiving They're on to you. Get out. Get out of there! goes to hell. HQ compromised. We're going to need an extraction. I've got incognito. Deckard and International are on their way. Get to the roof. I'll cover you. That's one of the potential agents of yours. Total badass. We'll be using her on our playthrough. Decker, how long till extraction? 30 seconds. Get us out of here. And there you have it. Invisible Incorporated was We've got work to do. Raided by corporate goons. And now we're forced to take our stealth sabotage show on the road. Um, initially, you may only begin with Dicker International. Uh, the power drip and the lockpick programs. Um, these are your four starting choices for beginning a campaign. Uh, International, uh, they have every starting unit 
um, base has one installed augment. That would be the first item here. It usually looks like a head of some sort. Um, augments can do all sorts of awesome things. Uh, Deckers allows agents to uncover allows this agent to uncover demons. Those are um, counter hacking uh, programs that do bad things to you uh, when you hack something else. Uh, allows him to detect them in objects these next two. Uh, detect means identify, I'm pretty sure, because you know if an item is trapped to begin with. He also comes with a Neural Disruptor, which is the standard stun, uh, not gun, but uh, melee weapon, and a cloaking rig. If you see modded or modified or someone's name, generally the item is better than normal, but occasionally it's worse. Um, Internationals Augment allows her to hack items from a distance uh, and reveals hackable items from a distance. Uh, the reveal is much more useful than the distance hack, though the distance hack is pretty cool. Um, it does not allow her to use items that affect hacks at a distance. For that, she has to get up close and personal, just like everyone else. And she also begins with the Neural Disruptor. Um, I could go over the various choices. I think I've unlocked all the different programs possible fusion see there's some very interesting ones um I, I this game is all about experimenting uh and i'm very curious about some of these but for now we're going to go with a really really stable group once you've played your your tutorial campaign um Shayla. tony Zou's or two academic. Muratova is a deadly weapon in human form. Sh I think it might take two. Ma Esther is one of our newest recruits, and she shows great promise. She's certainly motivated to get back at the corpse after the smear job they did on her. I don't keep up with the Holovids, but even I had heard about her so-called youthful indiscretions. The corpse are never more ruthless mm. when they are trying to control their public image. I feel the same may be said for Esther. Please, Central, please. You can eventually use Central and Monster himself. Um, but we're going to be taking Nika and Prism. Like I said, Nika is a total badass. Um, her augment is the Adrenal Regulator. It gives the agent an extra attack. That's two attacks per turn. And she gains three AP after any attack, ranged or melee. She also comes with a Volt Disruptor, which is, I would say, an, the alternative melee weapon to the Neural Disruptor. The Volt Disruptor drains your power, power that you use to hack, um, and power that you use to uh, to yeah perform other programming tricks incognita's power um, instead of having a cooldown you can use as much as you have power so that lets her get in two attacks per turn whereas prism has refraction chamber augment and this is every time you hack something up to twice per turn you get one power back um, so these two work great together. Nika uses power to um, needs a bunch of power sitting around for her volt disruptor to get off her numerous attacks um, and gain that extra action points. Whereas Prism passively generates or uh, yeah passively feedbacks feeds back energy into the system as we hack things. Um, uh, for programs. This top program is the one you'll be choosing to generate power for yourself. Um, power Drip is just plain reliable, one power per turn. Fusion requires five power to initiate, um, but you gain three power per turn for four turns. So that's, uh, I believe it's nine total power over four turns. So that's a little more than two per turn. Um, basically, the benefit of fusion is that you can have more power coming in for a period of time. Seed is interesting. I haven't actually used it myself. Your first program each turn costs four power less to run. So you basically get like a free program every turn instead of power generation of one sort or another. Uh, Faust is gain two power per turn, which is a lot. Uh, but it gives you a 20% chance of installing of a demon installing, which will generally have a very negative effect on you. Um, each of these is combined with an interesting 
form of getting your hack done. Faust comes with Brimstone, breaks one firewall for three power, which is expensive, but it has a chance of reversing a demon installed. Um, not sure how effective that combo is. Not going to go with that. I'm going to take Fusion and Parasite. Parasite's one of my favorites. It costs zero power to initiate. Um, it slowly breaks firewalls at a rate of one per turn, uh, and the more parasites you have out, the more expensive it is to create a new one, but it's still incredibly cheap as long as you're willing to wait. And since it's so cheap, um, and fusion generates so much power every turn, uh, it's a perfect match for Nika and Prism. So, this is going to be my go-to expert level Operator, are you attack. There? Good. I was afraid you didn't make it out. Headquarters is gone. Most of our agents have been captured or killed, and our accounts all frozen. I don't know how the corporations found us, but you can bet they won't give up now that they've had a taste of blood. The jet's stealth rig should keep us hidden if we keep moving, but Incognita can't survive long on backup power. She's got 72 hours tops. We need to mount a counterattack before then, or we'll be defenseless against their scans. If that happens, we may as well just crash this thing into the ocean. You've never seen the inside of a corporate deprogramming chamber. I won't see the inside of another. Incognita is scanning for targets of opportunity where we can replenish our supplies. Follow her leads and gather what resources you can. I'll run through our contacts and see what favors I can call in. We're going to need all of the advantages we can find in the coming days. Alright guys, did you catch that? We're taking Nika, Prism, Fusion, and Parasite on this endless run. Our intrepid AI can only survive for 72 hours. That's the timer until the final mission. Um, of course, every second counts, but you will rarely spend enough time to actually affect the game sitting around planning. All right, so here we have our current location somewhere in Europe. We can view our achievements, we can view the menu. And here uh, you can view the available missions will show up as these targets. So here a Plastec Executive Terminal. So pl the first word is the name of the company that owns it. Each company has different, um, I'd say, sh approaches to defending their territory. Some are highly roboticized. Robots can be hacked, but not for long, and are a little terrifying when they're on a rampage whereas others go more into the human element or have more tech savvy. Um, executive terminals is the type of mission. Uh, executive terminals uh, give you a wider swath of targets to choose from. Uh, so the game always starts you out with one of those missions. Below that is the location and the number of hours it takes to fly there. So we'll use up 12 of our 72 hours until the end game. Um, just getting to our first mission uh, Every time you use 24 hours uh, on the next day, all the missions become another difficulty level harder. Uh, and to the right here, this one that you see when I hover over this, that is the difficulty level of this mission. The left is the symbol for Plaztec Industries or whatever it is. Top right, credits. Uh, bottom, net worth. That includes upgrades, items, programs, credits, everything, all the credits you spend. Basically, this is your score, is your net worth, whereas the credits is how much you have to burn right now. Executives are notoriously slack when it comes to network security, and their terminals are full of interesting information. We found a lightly guarded executive complex here. Get in, find the computer, and steal their contact list. Then we'll have our pick of future targets. All right, so executive terminal, she just gave me the rundown on that. I won't repeat what she said since she's repeating what I already said. If you click here, it tells you pretty much exactly what you're going to get. Holds the location of future targets of value. Um, infiltrate, cancel, you can come back, no point executive on the first mission. Central will repeat herself a lot. But if you've played the kind of games I've played, <laughs> XCOM, then you'll be used to that. Bad news, Operator. They caught us completely by surprise, so we have no firepower with us. The guards' weapons are gene-coded to their owner and useless to us. We're going to have to make do with what we can find along the way. 
We've beamed you through the security grid. You should be somewhere near the target, but you'll need to look for it. Get the list and find a transport pad to escape. But be quick about it. They noticed a disturbance when we ported in and their alarm level is already rising. All right, mission objectives, locate the executive terminals, get out alive. Secondary objective, find and steal everything that's not bolted down. So, um, there are, let's look at our soldiers. We've got AP. When you hover over a place that you can potentially go, the AP above the head of your character displays how much will be left when you get there. So if we move directly to this green door, we'll have three AP left on Nika. You can push tab to cycle through. Uh, if you move to the door, you'll have five AP left on Prism. Um, here you'll note the augments. They each have two augment slots, though that can be increased. Uh, one empty, one each. That is, of course, this is their beginning augment as described when you're picking them. And then their inventory, also as described, start with three slots. You can upgrade their strength to go higher. Um, we'll go over some of these actions. Basically, you can overwatch with weapons or ambush, which will let you kill guards on their turn. Um, you can peek, which is incredibly important, something you'll have to do all game long. And you can sprint. If you have if you have eight or more AP, you can hit the F key. Or actually, I changed it to F. You can um, activate sprint to gain three additional. Though all of your actions will create noise that will alert guards of your presence if they're nearby. Um, looking at the character sheet, these are things you can find out when you're selecting characters as well. Speed, hacking, strength, and anarchy. There are bonuses. They're pr as described. They're pretty easy to understand. Um, the usefulness of particular ones you'll see as you go, uh, but they all have their place. Anarchy being a great one, it lets you steal. Having level two lets you steal from guards that are not unconscious, unconscious, which uh, is great for not setting off tons of alarms. All right, um, here you have the security level. This is your timer. Things get worse and worse as this goes up. It automatically goes up once every at the end of every turn or maybe it's at the beginning of every one of your turns except the first it goes up by one section when it reaches five it hits the next level and starts again and uh, something bad happens uh, it can also be increased in a number of ways including cameras uh, killing guards guards seeing disturbingly killed things all sorts of stuff can trigger higher security levels um, and it's something the, yeah, your life can be really easy if you are careful and keep security low and maintain steady progress, or it can get hard very, very quickly if you let the security get out of hand. Lastly, if you push space, here you see, uh, what is it called? Tactical view? Uh, I think of this as hacking view. This is uh, basically where Incognita is looking for things to hack. Um, all the programs she has installed appear on the left up here. We're going to go ahead and activate Fusion. Note we had 10 power, and now we have 5. We spent 5, and this has its cooldown activated. So for the next uh, 3 turns, we'll gain 3 power every turn. Um, and then, of course, we have our Parasite ready to go. Nothing we can currently see is hackable. Um, here we have a red door that is... Uh, a level one security door that we cannot get through unless we steal from a guard and here we have a console that you hack to gain additional power to power your programs um, no reason not to hack it just now um, I'm gonna start with Nika she's kind of our brawn and we want to start off all stealthy like so um, the best I, best approach, the safest approach to a room, is to have two AP on the agent that gets in front of the door or to the side. Uh, it's safer to be to the side uh, because you can then open the door and perhaps be concealed if, uh, say, someone were looking through there instead of having them spot you when you're right here. But if you're right in front of the door, you can save an action point. Two AP lets you peek to see if it's safe. Then you can open the door might reveal a little more territory and then when the doors open and you peek you generally reveal almost the whole room 
So that is the standard safe way to look around. We're going to do the same thing here. All right. So unless you're playing on expert in expert plus difficulty, you will be able to tell if uh, if a tile will reveal you or activate an alarm or something like that. Now I suggest regularly at the end of every turn pushing space and taking a look for things to hack that you might not have noticed or you might have forgotten were revealed um, before you end your turn. There's a hotkey for ending your turn. Alright, security level goes up a little bit. Here is this telling me that it's bad news bears. Um, so security level are these these portions around the circle, and then a security measure is triggered. Uh, the game is a little inconsistent in its use of the word security level. Uh, it'll be like when the next security level goes, and it'll mean. I'm pretty, uh, yeah, yeah, you'll see. Experimentation required. Okay, we closed the door just in case guards were walking around. We'll open it again. No reason not to inch up. All right, here, if you see a beamy thing like this, you can um, hover over it to get some description. Beam emitter Y1 grid. This device is linked to power grid Y1. Here is power supply Y1. Um, if you disable this power supply, it will disable this beam emitter. Note the power supply is hackable. Parasite. Boom. Now, Parasite is slow working. It does not immediately lower levels. Uh, that's a major, major drawback. Uh, you will want to, over the course of your mission, uh, find either equipment or other programs that let you immediately knock down firewalls as opposed to the slow burn of the parasite, but it's awesome. Note that parasite now costs one power for the next parasite. We don't have anything to hack though, so not much to say about that. And we'll just move her into position. We're just taking our time. It's much better than making a fuss. Just keep security level low. All right, with a successful hack, um, we her refraction ability kicks in, giving us plus one power. Of course, fusion has been giving us plus two power for a while now, so we're definitely starting to rack up the power. All right, there's a door here. I suggest... Okay, I'm a little nervous. Okay, if... So when we peeked, we could see all of this watched territory. Okay, so if you hold down Alt, you get this tactical view that shows you exactly what's going on in every space because sometimes the visual indicators can be a little unclear. Um, basically, a form of red is bad. Yellow means that you're hidden, but an enemy could normally see that space if there weren't something blocking it. Um, just to give you an idea of their cone of vision. Um, green. Uh, bright green means you can move there, light green means not. It's just very, very helpful and very obvious what's going on. Okay, so when you see a room that's all covered in red like this, you're going to want to open a door and peek. Now, um, if you're standing in front of the door and there's a guard on the inside, he will notice if he's looking where that door is um, and come over to investigate. And if the camera is pointed right at you, like this camera is not pointed towards the door I opened, but if it was, and I was standing out in the open, it might actually see me and raise the alarm level preemptively. Now we're going to throw down another parasite, feel free. Um, let's go ahead and set ourselves up for maximum AP. We're going to move in front of the door so we don't have to do that next turn. So we'll have all eight AP to go straight into the room. Oh, console, huh? I'm not too power hungry now. The game has kind of forced me to wait um, a bit, so I don't think I need to hack that for power just yet. 
Um, one thing I will note is that if you peek and you don't move your uh, operatives, then you will have full vision during the enemy turn of the area behind the door. But if you peek and then move, you lose that. All right, refraction chamber ups our power supply once again. And I'm pretty sure fusion is going to grant us another power. So taking any of this console power would just be a waste. I'm not sure if it improves your... Yeah, well, if it improves my score, it can't be by too much. All right, we've got three AP. We're gonna peek. I see a guard. That looks like a stationary guard if I ever saw one. Okay, he's watching this area. Okay, so if it says watched, that means that they will immediately pull their gun on you, which is really bad news. If it's noticed, it means it will alert the guard and they will come to check it out if you walk through that space. So. If I open this door and the door opening doesn't trigger a investigation, then walking through this space certainly will. These spaces won't, but then there'll be this space behind me, he'll probably walk past me. Um, the basics are I could ambush him, but Did you see that? There you go. And we've got one AP left. Let's just go ahead and peek. You can um, observe a guard's movement. If a character has seen them uh, this turn, then that character can spend AP to observe movement. But I have a really good idea of where he's going already, so no need for that. Um, we also showed a corporate safe. This is where you loot money and occasionally items from the corporation. You definitely want to hack as many of those as possible. Now, uh, Nika can't run, doesn't have enough movement. Closing the door is not going to help us. Um, but we can totally ambush with her Volt Disruptor, as long as we have the power to use it when he comes over, and we most definitely will. Um, I suggest, as good practice, closing doors um, before you ambush, uh, and closing doors in general. All right, lots of, yeah, lots of action points. No red on the other side. Uh, this room, since there's no red or anything, I'm just going to hop through instead of peeking again, because I'd love to be in cover here. Uh, even if there is a guard, he shouldn't be able to see me without coming very close thanks to this bookshelf. So we look good to go. One thing you really don't want is an agent, but is this guy to come investigate, and when he opens this door, see one of your other agents here because then he'll be locked on, ready to shoot. Um, if I were going to leave her outside the door, I'd want her hiding here. Otherwise, I'd want her back here or in this room. All right, so let's see this in action. On later missions, I won't explain so much stuff, but right now it's all kind of key. All right, you see we used to power. Safe unlocks. Uh, we get her prism refactor chamber gives us more power. We're at 19 power total. We do need to pay for fusion again. Um, but this nice slow use of parasite, um, very cheap to unlock stuff and uh, just makes everything awesome. Now note that Nika gains from her ambush attack, she gains 3 AP for the next round, which is totally awesome. Also, once you stun someone, you can steal their valuables. I suggest you do it. Uh, Nika is especially flexible because she has two attacks. Um, ambushes do not count as her attack for this turn. They do count as her attacks from last turn. So um, if you use up both her attacks, then you won't be able to go into ambush mode. But um, we can now KO this guard two more times with our Volt Disruptor, use up, using up all of our attacks. And we can gain a total of nine bonus AP if we really want it. Um, note that it says we're pinning and two. Two is the number of rounds the guard will be out um, after we stop pinning him. As we, long as we pin him, that counter will not tick down. Uh, 
what you don't want when guards get up they tend to start running around uh, and looking for you quite frantically and it can be very troublesome uh, one of the things you can do is drag a body uh, with you or to a safer place where other guards won't see it and become very alarmed like here would be a good spot because it's hidden um, and generally that counts as pinning so his uh, KO counter won't be coming down he won't be waking up as long as we're dragging him if you're gonna play it really safe you've only got like one body down uh, Nika is a perfect dragger for let's see this reason we'll stun him again that uses up power but we have a lot of power um, currently so now we're at 14 AP we can drag him all over the room and I'm gonna go ahead and hit him again okay there we are a ridiculous 17 AP and we're just gonna take him wherever we feel like so that I can do all my sneaking while maintaining this pin and we'll check out that door next turn slow but steady. We're trading time for safety. Because as soon as he wakes up, he's going to start looking around. Things will get awkward. Um, here, these red doors, you can't go through them, but guards will be teleported into these chambers. So it's nice to note their location. They do show up on the board as bright red. Same as these security doors. But... All right, so there are no guards inside the chambers ever to begin with, and when they're teleported in there, you will be notified. So I feel quite safe. I'm going to peek up here. Um, guards can wander through doors. Their patrol paths will have them changing from room to room. Uh, an expert, maybe not a beginner, beginner. But uh, we've already been in both these rooms for a turn, and no guards came in. And guards' patrol routes are, unless otherwise, extended. Um, Oh, there was a guard walking. Alright, alarm level one. The corporation activates extra cameras. Always best to go press space and check your map. Here we have the cameras that are booting. They're not active yet. They will be active next turn. Um, Parasite, you can toss onto one of these. I'm going to use these to actually give me extra power through a refraction chamber because my parasite's free. Next turn this little hack and give me my refraction chamber bonus. Refraction chamber, everything parasite hacks, um, it hacks all at the exact same time. So you only get one of your refraction bonus from using parasite ever. And you'll need to manually hack something during your turn to get that other refraction chamber power. Um, even though I've parasited this, it will come on, scan the area, possibly increasing the alarm if it, level if it sees an agent or, yeah, or just an agent. Um, and then I will gain control of it. So Parasite is not so good at these rebooting cameras. Um, if there's one you're worried about, then you definitely want to consider uh, hiding your agents from it. Okay. We've got a lot of AP. I'm just going to pop this open. Uh huh. See, this is why I don't want to be standing there. Um, one of these cameras would have caught me if I hadn't been off to the side of the door. We're going to do another peek just to make sure we saw everything. Okay, so maybe hacking this camera was totally unnecessary. Should have waited to do that. Um, but I do, as I've said, have a good bit of power. All three of these things will hack. Note how much how expensive Parasite has gotten. Um, not a big problem. Uh, we can just wait. It'll hack all of these, and instead of spending three power to hack this immediately, we'll have it hack next turn. Secondary server terminals are where you can buy nice, juicy programs for Incognita to use uh, to spend your power on. Um, it's a wonderful thing. We're going to drag this guy. 
does cost, let's see, it looks like three AP to drag. I'm gonna peek in here. There's another camera. That red flashy means it's coming online. And another door. And there's a console with three power in it. I do want all that delicious, juicy power. This guy. I'm gonna go ahead and drag him here, drop him, close the door just in case anything's coming through. Mm, to hack. I'm gonna go ahead and spend three power I'll get from this console on that. Cameras are my highest priority uh, as they increase the security level and they block my movement and blocking my movement cost me time also increasing my security level so really just the fact that they stall me they perform their function anyway so I want them done I want them dead as soon as possible all right you can check over here on the left to see if there's any AP left I know prism has nothing to do so I'm just gonna end the turn Okay, we hack all the things. Refraction Chamber only gives us one power for all our hack. This time, I'm going to wait until I've used up all my AP to look around. That guard seems to be sitting there. I don't want to... You know, I actually don't mind dragging him, do I? We can always stun him again. <laughs> Poor sad guard. Let's move here, grab this power, get up here with two AP left, optimal, open, C. See, that's why two AP is so much better. You can open the door and take the second peek. Okay, here's a pile of stuff I want to hack. Two corporate safes, one of the good safes uh, has much uh, more profitable, big safe, also higher firewall level and a console database that will reveal all the consoles in the building to me. Not really a high priority target for me as I'm pretty. Um, consoles only give you power and I'm kind of self-sufficient on that. Um, there are quite a few things I want hacked. And am I gonna pay? How much power? Three power from this? Yeah. I'm gonna pay for the convenience of having them all broken right now. Uh, having a sleeping guard means that convenience factor is high. Okay, let's inch here so we can at least get a peek. That guy, okay, here is our teleport out pad. It's always got these this blue circle and this downward arrow, um, or this green double wide green bar. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna have to go. It looks like I'm gonna have to ambush this guard because um, he does not look like he's patrolling. He would have been into this room uh, where I could have seen him before if he was patrolling. There's someone patrolling. Okay, there's refraction chamber. Fusion, always check when you're using fusion to make sure you haven't, you can start it again. Okay, here we're gonna demonstrate the sprint. This is an ability you probably wanna use a good bit. Once you use it, you'll note that all your movement becomes yellow, indicating that you're creating noise. Note that we're generating the same um, sound waves that guards do. Oh, that's not hacked yet, unfortunately. Let's move here. All right, so guards will make noise and appear in yellow if they notice you. So we can be pretty positive there's not a guard. I bet they're writing gripping TPS reports on that. Also, if you don't see red right here and the space on the opposite side of the door, you know it's safe to open the door. Unless you're playing on Endless Plus. Alright. So now we're nice and hidden behind this desk. This is what we came to hack. Um, I will totally pay one 
to throw a bug on that. It'll take two turns for the parasite to dig through the firewall. In that time, we'll go over here and check if there's another door to another room. We want to post up right about here and look. As for her, this room we don't need to go into until we're hauling our goods out of this executive terminal. So let's actually check out this door. Good. 2 AP. We know this guy moves. I've heard him move <coughs> multiple turns. He's facing away from us, so I feel totally free to shift around. Alright, so I only need to reveal this corner here, and I could safely move in front of the door, which will give me maximum entry AP. And uh, there you have it. That's how I scope that room. My people are out of AP. Fusion is going. You can very, very... Okay, that was the sound of our guard waking up. Gotta stay on top of that fusion. One thing to note is that you can peek through two doors at once if they are spawned close enough to each other. So here I get a nice double peek through both of these, which can save you some AP. This guy is going to walk right past us. Um, and I can open this door safely and examine my options. Um, he won't notice that the door has been opened uh, if it's not done while he's looking at it. Uh, they also... Yeah, the way the guard's view works is... Uh, pretty limited. You're pretty safe. What we're gonna do is... So if I move here, I'll have one AP left. I can tell by looking at this AP jewel over my head. I can spin that one AP to observe this guy's movements. Note how my movement contracts. So here is his status. It says he's patrolling. He's moving exactly to this position. Um, so what we're going to do is if they're moving perpendicular to you at a right angle, then you are totally good to go being right here. I will totally hack this. Nanofabric. Ooh, I forgot to check out what was on the secondary server terminal. Well, we'll see. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and steal this power. Uh, guards won't notice any of your interactions with various items as long as you're hidden. So we know that guy woke up. Nika has to deal with that. Um, he's far enough away that we can totally sprint. And whenever you can, sprinting is pretty good. Okay, here we know that there is no nowhere else to go. So now we're looking at the full map. I know where all the goodies are. Um, note that this yellow indicates that this guy is investigating that area. So he's actually headed away from all of our agents. Um, we will have to deal with him again. Uh, you can hack everything if you want. It might increase your score in a very mild way. I... I yeah, speed is of the essence. I'm just going to go ahead and send Nika there. Should be able to steal from this guy without attacking him. Uh, if you attack him and he wakes up, they become a bit more aggressive in how they search the compound. Uh, and I prefer he just stick to his patrol route and not bother me. So... I do have plenty of power to spend. I could hack the rest of this stuff if I felt like it, but I don't. Really not. So when they reach that spot, when they reach that investigate area, they will do this 180 degree stare, Care Bear stare, where they will totally see you. Um, now, this red exclamation point over him means that he is hunting. That means he's going to keep hunting uh, until he dies or I escape. Other people, if they hear a suspicious sound like a sprint, um, they'll go to investigate, but if they can't find anything immediately, they will give up. Alright, since hacking is free... 
Yeah, I will go ahead and spin the power if I got it, because I am making three power a turn, so why not hack all this extra stuff? Let's go ahead. Remember you have to decide whether to sprint um, before you go below eight action points. If you somehow manage to gain AP, like from Nika's attacking AP game, over eight, then you can actually decide to sprint later in your turn. But that's You've got the kind of an advanced maneuver. About and have changed up their patrols. Be careful on your way out. Okay, generally when you achieve your primary objective, uh, something bad happens. <laughs> in this case, the guards all switch up their patrols and do crazy stuff. Um, I closed that door just so no one would spot me if they entered the room. It's just habit, but it's a good habit. So let's steal from this. 120 credits, nice. That brings up to 930. Um, this guy is doing something. You can tell because he's got this little question mark over his head. Uh, observing his movement would be a nice thing because I do want to steal from him. And you do have to get within like melee range to steal. We'll have one AP left if we do that. And if I don't want to get up behind him because he's going to turn back on me and notice me, then I can always go over next to this nanofab and check it out. So He's investigating. Note that his path, yeah, there's no good way to steal from him this turn because he's just going to walk backwards and into me. But I do want to be close to him. So I'm going to instead move here. You can issue an order from here. Uh, I suggest you do. If you're planning using a tactical thing, just right click to issue that move order. Okay, let's look. Um, you So whenever you go to a nanofab, a charge pack and a med gel will always be available. Everything else is random. Charge packs let you recharge uh, weapons that have ammo or reduce cooldowns on items by two uh, once kind of expensive for say a one-shot reload and it's the only way to reload anything so yeah look for stuff that has cooldowns over ammo if you can but there's definitely benefits to having ammo you can use up just like that without a cooldown med gel lets you revive an agent who has been down somehow um, it's cheap it's effective and otherwise you have to eat, drag their body to the escape route Buster Chip lets you break through and hack stuff. Um, lets an agent do it instead of incognita. Lock decoder lets you go through locked doors over. It takes a couple turns. But uh, this is what I really want, distributed processing. Um, you install this in one of your agents. Uh, Prism is the perfect person. And it gives you a 50% chance to gain a power point at the beginning of each turn, um, every turn. Uh, that would just be fantastic for our game, which is very power heavy with Nika's multiple attacks. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to commit to that yet. Um, I should have checked out what was available on this secondary server first. Uh, and I will actually have time to. So let's take one look. Is there anything else I want? The plasma gun, not really interested in. Pretty crappy. Um, it is very cheap. Uh, and you can sell it after you've shot the ammo out of it. Uh, so, you know. But it's also lethal, which means that when you kill guards, uh, the security level goes up. So, not, not terribly interested in that. I'd much rather stun. So let's see, since I know where this guy's going, too bad he's going to be facing back this way. I do have to maintain my hiding space. There's nowhere I can get to that's closer to him. So we're done. He makes his move, moves where our camera can see him. This guard comes out of hiding. All right, we just hit alarm level two. That means that all the firewalls go up by one retroactively, which means these things don't hack this turn, even though they would have before. Here, okay, all the guards are accounted for. 
We are at 20 power, so our nice. We're gonna sprint. We're kind of moving into the end game. Ooh, an EMP pack. We can sell that or use it. We don't have the hacking skills, but Prism does to set it. Detonates at the end of the turn, disables all mainframe devices and drones in a range of three tiles. Uh, that's kind of cool. Has an eight turn cooldown, so you can use it over and over again. Uh, quite a useful tool. I probably won't sell it. Let's see, no guards are close enough to catch me. This red indicates their last known position, not their actual position. And this yellow, of course, indicates where they're looking. Now she's close enough to check out these guys' movements. Um, I do really want to know, where's he going? Okay, through there. I assume he is too. It's much better to know where the guards are going than to make some sort of foolish mistake. Let's look again. What did I want to buy? Uh, the buster chip is okay, but I'm not terribly tempted. Um, it can help. When you're using Parasite, buster chips can be quite useful for hacking through stuff faster as long as you can get someone close enough to get manual access. 650 credits for distributed processing. Nika, Nika can pretty much handle all the guards on this level all by herself. Especially when I have 20 power. Alright, our hacks are still feeding us extra power that we don't need. We're sprinting to get Nika through the level faster, so... Alright, 120 credits. Very cool. I would know no guards have gone through back through this level, so I know they're just lurking around here somewhere. And if they could see into this room, I would be able to tell. Yep. They're wandering away from me. Let's see what's on here. Okay, here are two common programs. I have all the money I'm going to get this level. Um, ping is incredibly useful. It creates a distraction noise, so the four turn cooldown only costs one power, so it's nice and cheap power wise. It causes guards to, nearby guards, to investigate that area. It cancels whatever they noticed before, so if you ran past them and they locked onto the sound of your footsteps and then you ping behind them, it negates them coming after you and they'll go after the ping. It also lets you get guards that aren't moving uh, out of a room or in a particular position uh, every now and then because you can't use it all the time. It is fantastic. I don't know if it's as good for me. Let's see, 1050 credits. If I can steal money from these two Which I totally will, because Nika's going to knock him out. <laughs> um, then I can spend all my money on ping and distributed processing. That won't leave me any money to level up these skills on my, my people, but it will give me some excellent tools for my next mission. Wisp tags all visible guards, which is basically like um, perma observing their movement. Um, you'll be able to see where they're going to move uh, anywhere that you can, s on any tile that you have vision of. So, say this guard was planning to move here. Even if I couldn't see him currently, I could see the arrows coming out here, which can be incredibly useful later in the game. Isn't quite as useful at the beginning. I'm going to pick up ping as it's just an incredibly useful tool. Um, and we're going to inch towards these guards as Nika might need some help. 
getting through. I really want to pick up that distributed processing before I leave this level. Okay, that was us hacking in that console database. Nothing, we didn't learn anything new. I like to keep fusion going at all times. All right, so. We're gonna go ahead and sprint on both our operatives as we are getting very close to the end game. All right, there he is. Unfortunately, he really has that door covered. I want to see where all of these guys are going. Okay, he's going away. Now, we've already knocked out and robbed this guy, so I'm not as interested in stunning him. So, yeah, this is a tough one. All right, we're going to use ping right now to make our lives easier. First, we're going to sprint. And we're going to... If you're going to run into their vision, which I have to if I want to tackle this guy, he'll go on Overwatch and then I can attack him. On Endless Plus difficulty, if they are in Overwatch, they will kill you before you can attack them. The guards are faster than you. In this one, if they see you, you can still attack them first. Um, Did you hear that? Stop! What was, what was that? that? Investigating. Investigating. Alright, so he went into Overwatch. <laughs> We're going to smack him, giving us extra AP. This is something you can't try very well with other guards. Oh, he's carrying so many goodies. I want the goodies quite bad. But once you got... You can not take goodies over your normal carrying capacity, but then they start to slow you down and eat away your AP. Alright, now observe. As we ping this guy, he loses interest <laughs> in this poor fellow. Now we're screwed. Okay, so I didn't think the door opening would turn out quite like that. Let me showcase the last major feature of the game. Rewind. Uh, another thing you can do is, if you're going to rewind, you can look at different plans you can have. Like, can he hear if I dash up there? No, he can't, so there's no point in doing that. So you get a number of rewinds in every difficulty to let you set back the beginning of the last turn. These are incredibly tactically useful, they're just built into the game. Definitely use them, you can undo purchases that don't turn out quite the way you want. Like I could instead go get distributed processing, and because that guy had... I knew he had credits... Oh no, I need pink for my plan. Mm. 
Let's hold on. Did you hear something? So what we're going to do instead is lure one guard back here and ambush him. And then Nika can ambush the other guard like she did last time. And we can ping distract the third guard that we've already ambushed and all will be well in the world. Hmm. He goes this way like he did before. He goes this way. Your hack continues. Rewind is an awesome idea. No need to save scum. 90 cred chips, perfect. Now she can dash back to get distributed processing. Though we might sit on him for a turn to give Nika a chance. Let's look at this guy. Oops. Let's... Okay. I'm gonna use ping to draw this guy into my ambush. We'll go ahead and collect this power. She's still ambushing. Looks like it. She's still sprinting. So we're just gonna drag this guy back in the direction of the nano fab so that we can both pin him and come closer to buying stuff. Remember I checked out where this guy was gonna go last turn. And we wrap up that little situation much more neatly than it was the first time. Now, if you're gonna pick stuff up and you wanna sprint, but it's gonna encumber you, you can sprint before it encumbers you and takes away your action points. Of course, I have bonus AP from ambushing him, so. Level one security cards will get you through these red doors. Um, if you need it, use it. I'm gonna grab this med gel. And I'm gonna spend some power to let Nika run insane distances. Uh, when you're running away from guards that will wake up soon or guards are investigating, it's best to always close the doors behind you. It costs no action points. She's gonna drop this dude. I think Nika can actually, yeah, she can sit on top of him. She's that fast. How insane that is. Crazy. And then prism, oh, I forgot to sprint. Nothing left to hack. All the guards are too far away to intercept me. I'm pretty much home free. Um, I can sell this med gel later. Uh, I don't need to sell it this first. Okay, definitely want this extra power. I always have one kind of power hacker specific uh, character and distributed processing is amazing. Now you can install an augment or you can throw it in your inventory to install in someone later. You have to carry it around that way, but you don't have to install it in the person buying it. So you can, you don't have to bring this person to the machine to get it. However, Prism is our hacker du jour. So we're gonna go ahead and install it on her. Cause we wanna save more combat programming for Nika. Nika, of course, doesn't lose the ability to sprint just because she's encumbered. What you can do is trade items. Um, this EMP pack requires hacking level two, which Prism is going to get at some point. And uh, I'm gonna give the med gel to her too. Now we're evenly distributed. We'll have all our action points at the beginning. We have 130 credits. We pretty much used everything up. So let's just... 
Okay, they're sending in more guards. Uh, what happened? We could ambush this guard to see if it's if he's gonna be holding anything. Cause sometimes they have items and such. So I feel pretty fine about ambushing him. We'll sit on this guy's body, and then we can just sprint the exit next turn. Nothing left to hack. Nope. It's pretty much clean this puppy out. Investigating area. When guards wake up, they investigate the area they were in. Generally, I think guards that are summoned don't have items on them. Yeah, we'd be able to steal it if they did, but that's how the cookie crumbles. We can probably just walk to the exit. She can sprint. Nika, if we need a little extra movement, we can always give him a little tase or two so that we can make that sprint to the exit. And there you have it. That was our first mission. You expect mission, you expect to run about, uh, I don't know, about 8 to 11 missions uh, maximum in one story campaign, as there's only so much time before the final mission. Uh, you can go, yeah, it's just exciting. Um, note that cleanup costs you, that's if you kill enemies or destroy drones or whatever then there's a cleanup cost. Uh, destroying cameras, which you can actually shoot cameras out, does not cost you, I don't think. Um, I'm not sure if you gain stuff for like hacking, power, da da da, but your net worth increase is what you're going for. That's your score. And of course this tells you all the interesting things you picked up along the way. Alright, here you can upgrade your skills. We have no money left for that, though we could sell things like this EMP pack. Currently I can't use it, so I can just shift it to my storage, so I don't have to carry it in the next mission. Med gel I never use because I'm too boss for that, um, so I'm planning on selling it. I've re-established contact with Monster. His network picked up the attack just before it hit us, and we're working to trace it back to the source. In the meantime, he's offered to sell us some of his more rarefied stock. Greetings. I don't often perform transactions face to face, but Gladstone is an old friend. I'll contact you when anything becomes available. So Monster is your Thank you, Monster. store if we find between a missions server, we may be able to bring them down. We will occasionally offer you them long discount they goods. Lose our trail. Continue scavenging operations and I'll keep you posted as more intel develops. All right, so you gain access to him at after the first mission. You can go back to upgrade your agents and see if he has anything to buy or sell, something that might not be Real motivated seller. Uh, obvious. Okay, smoke grenade. Note that these goods are always discounted. Um, these prices are the same as uh, those when you sell them in mission, so there's no difference in selling in or out of mission. Uh, he sometimes offers things called vault access cards. Those are fantastic. You have to go on a mission, a fairly difficult mission, just to get one of those. If you can buy it from Monster, do it, because it unlocks some sick stuff that we'll discuss later. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and set, sell this Thank med gel. Um, I haven't used an EMP pack. And I can't right now, because none of my characters have the required hacking ability, nor can I afford to give it to them. Uh, I'm tempted to sell it. It does do some interesting stuff, and I've never used one before. Experimentation is kind of key in this game, and I will be upgrading my hacking skill fairly soon. I'm afraid, though, I want to sell it. Because you want credits going into every mission, so you can buy whatever goodies there are, like distributed processing. This is going to help me the whole game. I want some credits going in. 
Um, that also means I'm not going to spend this 500 to upgrade anything. I don't need... Generally I make upgrades to use equipment, and that's it. Um, so, then of course you see the hour totals are different, and you try and plan your next mission. Um, there's two vaults we can sneak into. You can make a lot of money, but if you have a vault access card you can make way more. Um, Here's a server farm. That'll give us a lot of options for buying upgrades for Incognita, for our hacking and other useful benefits. There are a bunch of items on server farms, or a bunch of programs you can only get from server farms that are super cool. You'll want to bring some cash to take advantage of it. And Cybernex Labs will let us make some extra room in the brains of our agents or um, install new programs for free. Uh, you can also use vault access cards at some cybernetics labs. I definitely saw a vault door at a, a high-level cybernetics lab mission I went on towards the end of my last campaign that uh, I don't know what's on the other side of it, but I wish I had been able to find out. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to get those cards except through Monster randomly, and I'll also say rarely. So. I'm going to leave the mission here. We're definitely going to go just hop to the server form, farm five hours away, try and conserve some time while uh, hopefully new missions will pop up, uh, which will let us uh, take better advantage of what we have here. So next mission, guys, Plastec server farm, um, five hours away. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to see more Invisible Incorporated, let me know, um, because I really do enjoy this game. I'm totally going to finish this campaign, whether you like it or not, but I would be interested in going on some of the endless runs and kind of regularly putting out some Invisible Ink content for you. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, play on.